some tactical nylon tactical gear as they sit today um, with this stuff you know new items are coming out every single day so this is just kind of how our go-to kit is as of September 2022 uh, who knows what it's gonna be next year or next week but uh, Zach do you want to give like a real kind of blanket overview of what we're looking at for your stuff here uh, yeah, so whenever we're doing our Tactical Thursdays, uh, I'm trying to just test out all the high pro or high profile stuff. You know, the stuff where it's like, hey, that guy, you know, wearing that, he's probably got some guns on him, of course, you know. So I got my play carrier right here uh, in front of us. And so as we're looking at that play carrier, guys, we're going to see that uh, it is a Cry SPC. Uh, I mean, structural play carrier, by the way. Um, learned that like a month ago, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I thought it stood for special. It's got three. Uh, Rifle mag sitting in that shawl concepts placard. I uh, really like that one. It's stretchy, but it also has a spot for, if you look right there, a Kim stick on the left side, mm -hmm. and then on the bottom, a tourniquet. On the right side, you can stick another Kim stick or Sharpie if you want. I think I have a Sharpie in there right now. Uh, and then I also have some uh, expander wings from Spirit of Systems there, or actually just one in there, because I'm just seeing a whole day uh, Prick 152. Uh, not a real one, it's a TRI, let's just be real. Uh, there's no reason to go out and waste your money on a real prick. Uh, it just looks cool. Airsoft, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't play Airsoft, it just looks cool. But it does a lot, you know, having a programmable radio and it expands your capabilities and having one that's as beastly as the TRI, PRC-152, it, it'll do a lot for you, right? So mm -hmm. if I want to go talk to airplanes, I can. Um, after that, we're going to see that I got a Peltor PTT on there. Uh, those PTTs are much better than the Nexus ones, in my opinion. So I got them in there so I can integrate the comms with my helmet, which I got right behind me, actually. All right, so this guy right here, uh, just the Team Wendy LTP bump, so it doesn't stop bullets, uh, sadly, but it mounts a uh, GoPro so I can capture all the sweet, sexy footage that we have um, that I don't publish because I don't think it looks that good. Uh, after that, like I said, I got my comms integrated in there. So we got our uh, Comtech 3s and they're a single lead because I'm not so cool. I talk to two people at once because that's crazy stuff um, on some core amp arms. Um, these amp arms, you know, they look pretty nifty, uh, but they really are a little bit more adjustable than like your, uh, aren't they the Peltor ones? Yeah, I have, yeah. on mine, it's not out here right now because it's not quite as danced up as Zach's, but I also have a, uh, a Windy Xville uh, lightweight tactical polymer. Uh, ours are very similar. I think mine's just tan and yeah. uh, hit underneath that black, but yeah, uh, I do have the same thing, Peltor contacts with uh, the Peltor arc rails, on the quick detach arc rails. Uh, not as quick as they make it seem. <laughs> that's that's the, kind of the general consensus of those Peltor QD mounts on yeah. these helmets is they're, they're anything but quick, which is fine because I'm not taking them off anyway. But right. just a note, if you're uh, kind of in the market for those, don't, uh, don't be so quick to believe they're, they're that fast. Yeah, I think these are also an older version of the amp arms. I think this is whenever the amp arms first came out. Um, the hub right here, once it's on, it's done. It won't come off. So if I really yeah. want to swap it out. Oh, also, I got the axle uh, adapters there for that. So if you're curious how I got Peltors on a uh, Ops Core uh, arm, that's the uh, axle product there for you. I uh, also got a low pro uh, scrim cover there. Uh, it's just a, a camo netting, all right? And then they got elastic band on it to hold it down. But I think that's a really good thing that you should have on there. Uh, cover up the black and everything else on there. Uh, there is a green cover for that from Team Wendy under that as well. And also some cool patches, but don't worry about those. If, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm a big Axel fanboy. So I also got a Axel Eclipse belt. Uh, these are pretty nifty. I got a True North Concepts uh, dropper right there. Uh, and MHA. MHA. Yeah, yeah, MHA, yeah. It, it does the same thing as Safari Land. If you really think of my, uh, you know, if you want my opinion, just get the Safari Land one. It's not that much different. 
Um, and it's also not eighty dollars. Hot like, take mm -hmm. alert! Hot take yeah, alert! Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> eighty dollars yeah. for that? I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't do it. Mine was my. I, I don't have uh, the True North. Uh, when we get around to mine, you'll see. I, I'm rocking the free Safari Land yeah. stuff, and I've yet to have a real problem with it. So, all right, next I got in front of me the Soul Eater uh, V2. Uh, the V3 has Molly. The V1 doesn't have this little pin holder on the bottom. Uh, so the V2 is the best one in my opinion. Uh, next up, I got Haley Strategic Mag Pouches. Uh, and then that's going to be for pistol and rifle. But that rifle one, if you notice, is on a Shaw Concepts uh, dropper as well. Um, so the reason I did that, I'm a short boy. So whenever I put this on with my play carrier, that kind of creates an issue for me. Uh, so whenever I bend to the left, then my magazine is going to hit my play carrier cummerbund, and that kind of sucks. Uh, lastly, I got a IFAC on the rear, on uh, it's an LBT, and then also the Army uh, USDI insert there. Um, really good to keep your uh, IFAC organized there. So, uh, and if you look on the bottom, I did that counting coup thing. So shout out to Fred. Uh, yeah, shout out Fred. Carabiner that to the bottom there, so that way it won't go away. All right. Um, so in total, if you look, I got one, two, and then in this other IFAC here, I didn't even point out yet, I got three on the play carrier. Um, so I got four in total on my whole kit. So there you go. Four tourniquets. Four tourniquets, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so uh, it's good to have one for each limb in my opinion. Yeah, each limb, uh, when we get to mine here in a second, do you have anything else you'd like to? Uh, no, I think that covers it all uh, from mine there. Sounds good, man. Well, I will roll my point directly into what I'm talking about here. Uh, so this is my chest rig, my belt. I told you I don't have my, uh, my helmet on display here right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the belt because there's a lot of similarities between mine and Zach, so we'll breeze through this. So this belt's from Blue Alpha. Uh, I own almost everything they make. They are a great company, um, good people, good customer service. Uh, I, if, if you got great customer service and your products aren't complete shit, customer for life right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a customer service guy. Uh, you know, Blue Alpha is one of those, Arbor Arms, another one. Uh, Axel really, really can't get much better. Axel, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, Blue Alpha belt, uh, their double, double layer belt. I run all STAC for my mag pouches. Ooh. If you see here, I got one of the angled ones. I believe this is the 40 degree. Uh, I like to have this just because you see over there, I run a big fanny pack. So I don't want anything facing kind of up and down uh, directly in front of my belt line here. Uh, so that makes it a little easier to grab out of there. I've got another one, another single pistol over here and then a single rifle. And then moving over to this side, uh, keep your eye on Facebook, Facebook gear groups and stuff. Uh, I got a guy, selling these uh, Safari Land dual mag pouches for like 10 bucks shipped per. So I ordered five. Uh, <laughs> now I got them everywhere. And then back here is an STAC dump pouch, Q dump pouch uh, hysteria. Everybody hates them, everybody loves them. Uh, for me, I think they have a very, very, very specific purpose, which is holding things for about two seconds. Uh, so, you know, I, if this water bottle is empty, I'll throw it in there if I'm, you know, Nowadays, you know, we're civilians, but back when our military days, if I was doing some sort of like, you know, if I had to collect some sort of evidence for like a post-blast analysis or something, you know, that I would need to kind of carry back with me off-site, you could throw it in a dump pouch. You know, it's just an easy way to have an extra pocket, basically, like an extra large cargo pocket in case you're already carrying around a ton of stuff. Carrying grass. Yeah, carrying brass <laughs> and trash. I mean, really, it's for trash. A dump pouch is for picking up trash, whatever you want, especially nowadays on the on the flat range. <laughs> then moving around, Safari Land holster. I don't need to expand on that. Gold standard holsters. And then I also have a Soil Leader V2 over here. Um, I chose to put my Sharpie on the top. Uh, just because I kind of flipped it around both ways. The Sharpie up top made it just a little bit more comfortable for me. And I felt like with me being, you know, a wider framed individual when I was bending down and that Sharpie being on top didn't feel like I was going to pop it. So uh, I really want to avoid Sharpie goo all over me. So that's about it for the belt. 
Set that down over here. Now let's get into this chest rig right here, trying to get to where you can see everything. So, Spiritus thing two, on, in front of that is a Spiritus Microfight Mark IV. Uh, I'm on Mark V watch. I have no complaints about the Mark IV whatsoever. It's been my favorite chest rig, uh, favorite, you know, fighting placard. Uh, they throw the word placard around a lot. Favorite that I've owned thus far. Uh, but, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, there's a lot of changes happening constantly in, you know, the tactical nylon world. So, you know, for 45 bucks or whatever it costs, you know, but then you add shipping, might as well try it. And, and there are no shortage of people looking for these uh, for, you know, a deal on my affirmation Facebook groups. So, three mags in the back. I just crafted this little knife sheath and slipped it in between the uh, little three mag separator and the front of the back pouch of the microfight there. Found it works pretty good. It's just a decent place to store a knife. Um, not dead set on it, but then in front, I've got the half insert right here. And then this free space over here. If I have anything like a handheld flashlight, uh, maybe if I'm picking up another multi-tool or something with a clip, we'll kind of live here and take up this amount of space. But then in here, I keep a Leatherman and a headlamp, two things that are very, very useful to kind of keep on you. So moving on to either side of that, I've got Mystery Ranch water bottle pouch. I kind of crafted my own little bikini top here with the uh, little shock cord and a stopper there. Kind of something you'd pull off of like a, you know, one of the mag shingles that's got the shock cord going over the top. It's really easy. You can just figure it out. On the other side, I've got another one of my Safariland pouches, covers two more mags, and then on this side, I have an additional tourniquet. Zach brings up a really great point. You want one for all four limbs. Uh, that's the best case scenario. Right now, I've got tourniquets in cars, I've got tourniquets at home. You know, there's a whole bunch of places they're tasked out, so I like to have one for you and one for me. It's kind of my absolute bare minimum that you want because you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna be using someone else's gear on them first. If that's not an option, you want to have an extra tourniquet that you're gonna be able to put on to someone else and still have one for yourself. Now, going down, I've got this Arbor Arms Nut Ruck. This is the Nut Ruck Large. In here, I keep, uh, I used to keep gloves and I started keeping them on my carabiner over here, but I keep a full IFAC in there, uh, minus tourniquet because the tourniquet lives over here. Uh, so everything that goes into your traditional IFAC, I also keep a whistle, I keep a compass, I keep uh, a map in there are the other kind of major things I want because this fanny pack will get moved oftentimes between this chest rig or a plate carrier or just having it by itself as like a standalone pack with the back strap off of this chest rig kind of fashions it into like a little cross the chest sling bag or just your typical dad style fanny pack. Uh, it's a really versatile piece of gear. Um, it's not exactly gray man, you know, if I'm running around town with a multicam fanny pack, that's, you know, it looks kind of odd, but I'll be damned if it doesn't work. So uh, also just as another note, I do keep two load bearing carabiners on there. Uh, they don't live on there permanently. They're kind of there right now because I needed something to hang gloves off of. And then I've got some tubular nylon that normally lives on that guy. It is currently on my plate carrier in the room behind me. Um, other than that, I've got, you know, the Spiritus fat straps on here. A lot of the stuff is just going to be a mix of Spiritus and Arbor Arms and for the belt S-TAC. Um, and then that is about it from me. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. But guys, uh, again, you know, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Get out here, do some training with us. We've got a gun club. That's awesome. We conduct training three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. If you want to come out and put on your tactical kit and, you know, run and gun with us a little bit, we kind of work together to give a good intro to the world of tactical shooting. Between Zach and I, we, we can get you get your foot in the door uh, of tactical shooting. It, it is a lot of fun and you know good, uh, good to kind of go back and forth with other people, seeing what gear works for them, what gear works for you. You know, you, you, 
fool around, you might just learn something. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Zach, anything else? Uh, I would just like to say, if you're trying to get into tactical gear, uh, look up uh, for a couple places. eBay is number one. Uh, you can find a lot of really cheap stuff there. Venture Surplus and those other surplus stores online. Uh, Americana Pipe Dream, those are all really good spots to find. Really cheap tactical gear. Uh, if it's military quality, then it's going to be good enough. All right. There is definitely a uh, difference between Chinesium or the Chinese nylon. Uh, Condor can hold its own, in my opinion, uh, but anything under that, you know, you're getting, you're talking about like uh, knockoff uh, yeah. first beer stuff. NC Star. NC Star kind of stuff. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go for that stuff. Just understand, look at reviews, uh, look out for those really good deals if you're really on a budget. Um, but my mantra is honestly buy once, cry once. So if you're dead set on uh, something that you know that is going to work for you, save up your pretty pennies and then get it. All right. Don't waste your money uh, trying to get something that works just for now because that's another chunk of money away from you getting exactly what you need for whatever scenario you're dreaming of or fantasizing about at night in your basement. Um, also, for a couple things on tactical gear, you want to have something that can hold bullets. You want to have something that can hold random stuff, so general purpose, and uh, preferably medical and water, um, especially, because uh, whenever you're out in, in the suck, uh, having water quick, quick handy is a pretty good thing, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, forgot that fanny pack down there has got iodine um, little tablets in it. You know, that things are great to have. Uh, Zach, don't, you got like a life straw. Or, some, or a lot of, something similar. I got a Cadendon and I got a Seanock uh, a uh, dirty bag with a Sawyer Mini. Yeah. So it's all great, man. I mean, I'm a huge proponent of carrying kind of as many mags as you can, but if I get caught humping through the woods and I've got 40 AR mags on me and nothing to purify water or start fire, I'm in a horrible scenario. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to catch yourself without being able to provide the basics for yourself. That's another thing. Uh, that you know we kind of harp on a lot because as cool as all this stuff is, you're the way. Go out there and get some training. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but for real, I mean, you have to be able to purify water. You have to be able to start fire. Uh, there's a ferro rod in not in that fanny pack right now, but it will get moved back. You've you've kept me accountable, YouTube. Thank you. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, those things, you know it. It can't be understated how important uh, being able to, you know, get water is. You know, you're not gonna survive long enough to go through all your AR mags if you can't drink. I think that about covers it. So yeah. uh, we're going to get onto our tactical training here in a couple hours. So come out and join us and uh, let us know if you have any questions, guys. And as always, remember to stay mentally, spiritually, and physically prepared. Thank you.